I'm Christelle from Diabetes Strong, and in this video I'll be talking about insulin sensitivity. We'll be talking about what it is and ways that you can improve it right now without medication. So when we talk about insulin sensitivity, what we're talking about is how effective your body is at utilizing insulin. So that can be the insulin that your body produces, or if you live with insulin-dependent diabetes like I do, it would be how effective your body is at utilizing the insulin that you inject. If your insulin sensitivity is not as it should be, you might have been told that you're insulin resistant. Insulin resistance is a center of prediabetes as well as type 2 diabetes. However, people living with type 1 diabetes can also develop significant insulin resistance. If you're insulin resistant, the cells in your muscle fat and liver don't respond well to insulin and won't be able to easily remove glucose from your bloodstream, which can lead to elevated blood sugar levels if your body can't produce enough insulin to keep up with the elevated demand. And this issue is one of the two primary culprits behind the development of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes, the other one being insulin deficiency, meaning that some people don't produce enough insulin. Some of the reasons that can lead to insulin resistance are excessive body weight, lack of exercise, smoking, or sleep problems. And some medications can also increase the risk of developing insulin resistance. So let's talk about what you can do to improve your insulin sensitivity. I think one of the most effective ways is to incorporate more exercise into your daily routine. Especially resistance training is super effective when it comes to improving insulin sensitivity. And you don't have to be a bodybuilder to see improvements from resistance training, but you do have to challenge your muscles. So resistance training is anything where we put our muscles under tension. So that for example could be body weight exercises, think squats or push-ups. You can be working with resistant bands. I have one here, it's a resistant band. Or you could be working with weights like dumbbells, barbells. But if that sounds too daunting for you, you can also just start by walking. Including a 30 minute walk after lunch, for example, or dinner can have a huge impact on your health as well as on your insulin sensitivity. Now let's talk diet because what you choose to eat can have a huge impact on your insulin sensitivity. So this doesn't mean that you just have to eat lettuce to optimize your insulin sensitivity, but making a few meaningful changes could potentially have a huge impact on your insulin sensitivity. If your diet predominantly consists of processed food, you could cut that down somewhat. You can replace some of those meals with less processed foods. So incorporating more fruits, vegetables, and grains. Not all processed foods are bad for you, obviously. Just because peas have been frozen doesn't make them a bad choice. However, you do have to be mindful of processed foods with added ingredients such as fat, salt, and sugar. You can see the guidelines from NHS here. And as you can see here, what they consider high fat is more than 17.5 grams of fat per 100 gram, or saturated fat would be high if it's more than 5 grams per 100 gram. For sugar, the guideline is more than 22.5 grams of sugar per 100 grams would be considered high, and for salt, It'd be more than 1.5 gram of salt per 100 milligram. And of course, you won't just necessarily know how much fat, sugar, and salt is in a product, but you just have to look at the nutrition label and it's all listed right there. So I think less processed food and more whole foods. The next thing you can do, and this really does not apply to everyone, however, if you are overweight, your insulin sensitivity can improve if you can reduce your overall body fat as excessive body fat blunts the body's insulin sensitivity. Even losing and maintaining a 10 pound weight loss can make a difference. And to lose weight, and this is very high level and I'm simplifying, but to lose weight, you have to be in a calorie deficit. That means that you have to consume fewer calories than you burn. That calorie deficit can be achieved through adjusting your diet and or adjusting your activity level. And now let's talk about alcohol. So just as you can enjoy a slice of pizza occasionally, you can also occasionally enjoy a drink of alcohol. However, alcohol and especially excessive drinking can have a huge negative impact on your insulin sensitivity. Research have found that merely 30 days of alcohol abstinence can significantly improve insulin sensitivities. So if you don't really care about alcohol, if it's not your thing, if you can be without it, Maybe try cutting it out for a while and see what it does for your body. Another thing to cut out of your life to improve your insulin sensitivity is smoking. So by now we probably all know that smoking and other tobacco use isn't exactly healthy. But aside from the cancer risk, it can also significantly impact your insulin sensitivity. In fact, after smoking, vaping, or chewing tobacco, 
It can take up to 48 hours for the nicotine to clear the body and for your insulin sensitivity levels to return back to your baseline. And the final thing I want to bring up in this video is managing your stress levels. The stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline can be constantly elevated if you do not manage your stress levels and your sleep patterns. And elevated stress hormones will make you more insulin resistant. So we can't necessarily change the environment that we live in. But there are some steps that you can take to help improve your stress levels. So for example, you can keep a sleep schedule or nap whenever possible. You can use guided meditation or breathing techniques when life becomes too hectic or simply just be more mindful of breathing, relaxing, managing your stress. And those were the six things that you can implement today to improve your insulin sensitivity and reduce your insulin resistance. If you can't do all six of them, you know, choose the one that you think will be most impactful for you and start there. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a like below and leave me a comment. Also, if you like my content and if you'd like to see more from me, remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content. Thank you so much for watching.